So I thought I would tell you a little bit about um, High Tech High. How did it start? Tell you, I want to give you an example of a project that we've done um, and tell you a little bit about our program. And then I thought I would just go right into questions because I don't know this group that well and, and I feel a little more comfortable kind of responding to questions that you have. So think of your questions. If I say to you, what questions do you have? And we all sit here uncomfortably. As a teacher, I will be fine with that and we'll wait patiently for you to come up with a question. But start thinking about questions, please, because it's important to me that we have that kind of uh, give and take. So high tech high. Um, well, first I want to say that high I'm not here to try to convince you that High Tech High is a really great school. So you can make your own uh, judgments about that. And I'm also not going to try to convince you that you should open schools like High Tech High in Hawaii. Um, I think that you could if you wanted to. And if you want to, I want to just share a little bit about the thinking that's gone into, into our school. And if that's appealing to you, then we can talk more about um, some of the things you might want to think about to do that. So High Tech High was uh, founded essentially about 13 years ago. Um, there was a group of business leaders, the, uh, the Business Roundtable in San Diego. Um, the high tech and biotech leaders in particular um, were meeting to try to do something about public education in San Diego. And high tech and biotech are very significant uh, industries in San Diego. And there was a sense of frustration, I think, on the part of these industry leaders who felt that they had been giving money to their local school district. And what was the return on the in investment? I think, and as private sector folks, they were a little impatient and feeling like, come on, well, let's, get, let's get going here. We want to we see some changes around here. So they were hiring a lot of H-1B visas from India and other places, and I think didn't have a problem with Indians, but felt like, hey, we've got all these kids here locally who are not choosing to become uh, math majors and science majors, and this is a challenge. Why can't we get more local kids to work in our industries? And in, in, in particular, there was a realization that in the low-income communities in San Diego, there was a particular underrepresentation in math and science, engineering, technology uh, fields. So they started this. They said, well, let's do something about this. Let's start a school called High Tech High. And so that's where we got the name. And I always apologize for the name, because it's kind of a dumb name, actually, if you think about it. Um, but anyways, it's our name. It seems to have gotten some traction. Um, but we this started with this very kind of pro-industry uh, perspective, in some ways sort of a very enlightened self-interest of, let's get enough workers uh, to work in this place. Um, I think one of the things that's very interesting about what these industry people felt is that there were pl lots of kids who were going to high school and getting A's. They were going to UC and they were getting University of California. They were getting A's. They were really good at taking tests. They were really good at listening to lectures. They were really good at taking notes. Um, but then they came to work in these industries and actually they didn't know how to do anything. And so I think interestingly, this very pro-business bent um, had this belief that kids need to be using their hands and their minds. They need to be actually doing things, making things. And so uh, they hired as their founding principal this guy who I describe as a 60s radical, wild-haired leftist guy who comes from this John Dewey tradition of kids using their hands and making things. And that, uh, for example, um, kids should be learning about uh, occupations even when they're in high school, not to mispredict they're going to spend the rest of their life as an engineer, but rather that um, he said, John Dewey said 100 years ago, um, he said occupations as a context, not as an outcome, by which I think he meant um, having kids learn the skills of physics, uh, the, the academic skills of physics, but in the context of building a robot, or in the context of building an ultra-high mileage vehicle, or learning, the, uh, learning about DNA, but in the context of cloning cells. So that, that giving kids this very uh, industry-specific um, context for learning the traditional academic skills that we're trying to teach in schools um, is, very, is a, more, it's a better path for, for a lot of kids. We started a strategy of opening a network of schools around the country. And we had, there are schools in Boston and in Chicago and Portland, in, uh, in Tucson, Arizona, and other, other communities. And our strategy was find folks who, who we think are nice, who are interested in what we're doing, who want some money, and we'll open schools with them. And, they, and in fact, they will open schools, and we'll try to provide some guidance. And I think um, one of the lessons we learned from that was that that was really not the way to do it, actually, basically, um, because they're really well-meaning people who are um, just good people trying to open schools around the country. But for example, we had a school in a city, which I will not name, where the mayor said, well, we want to uh, enroll students based on merit. We want to have a test score to, to get in. And we said, well, we don't really do that. That's not 
that's not our vision. We want to be a non-meritocratic place where we can serve all kinds of kids. And he said, well, but I'm the mayor, so I'm going to do this. And we said, you know what, you're right, and we're not going to be part of this uh, network anymore, and that's really fine, and you should really go do that, and that's terrific, and good luck to you. So we have sh shifted our uh, strategy to opening schools locally that we are kind of within walking distance of, and now we have some that we're in a short drive away from. Um, so we opened up in our third year a middle school because we wanted to have a longer <laughs> runway with students. And one of the things that we realized is that um, kids coming out of the fifth grade, we kind of would have preferred they come straight to our high school instead of going to a traditional middle school because they went to a traditional middle school and the teachers said, well, this is not about what you're interested in. This is not about your passion. That was elementary school. This is not about projects. This is not about interdisciplinary learning. This is about getting ready for high school. And this means sitting in rows and taking notes. And this is very serious business. And we said, you know what? That's actually not getting them ready for our high school. <laughs> so we said, let's open up a middle school. And we called it the, the un-middle school. Because we really did not want to, um, we wanted to extend that idea from elementary school that it is about your passions and it is about working in groups and it is about um, being liking school. One of the things that we think that's, I think, fairly radical is that we think it's okay if kids like coming to school. And that's um, met with a lot of resistance, I think, by a lot of people. Not, of course, when you say it like that, but when you actually come and you say, oh, the kids seem awfully happy. And it's often, it's a little bit of an accusation. <laughs> so we wanted to open up more schools. There was pressure from the Gates Foundation and others to, to do more, and we also wanted to save the world. And so we decided <laughs> that we would do that. And so we would try to do that part. So we opened up a second high school, and we called it High Tech High International. It's now in its fifth year. Um, and then to, to cut to the chase, we uh, eventually ended up opening up a third high school and a second middle school. So we now have in Point Loma, which is a community near San, the, uh, San Diego airport, we have one elementary school with about 300 students, uh, two middle schools, each with about 300 students, and then three high schools, each with four to 500 students. You know, we don't want kids to have to, get up, to come over on the Mayflower in, in order to get into our high school. So we have this idea that there's multiple opportunities to arrive along the way. I didn't deliver that joke very well, sorry about that. <laughs> so, so, um, so that's what we have in Point Loma. And along, so my story along the way with that, I was teaching physics at the school the first year, and I really got into, um, well, let me back up. My students said, we should build battle bots. If you know what battle bots are from Comedy Central, I see a few nodding heads. The nerds in the room are nodding. Everyone else is looking at me a little bit nervously. So battle bots were these big contraptions that could destroy each other. They're operated by remote control. And they're kind of like robots, but they're actually not autonomous. And they had like a chainsaw on the front or something. And they would <laughs> smash into each other. So of course, you'd be surprised to hear that adolescent voice thought this would be a really good idea. <laughs> And I said, well, that's pretty cool, but you know, what about robots? This is a project that came from kids and their interests. They, we really want to do this thing. I said, let's do it together. And so I went out and went to a bunch of com to conferences. I learned about robots. Uh, we started building robots. We started with, um, with Legos, and we graduated to other different kinds of robots. And of course, once we started building robots, I have a degree in physics, so I want my kids to suffer through a, a physics textbook just as much as the next person does. And so, OK, what's the physics that's, that's behind this? So we have capacitors. You have, I mean, the, the robots would back up when they, they hit a wall, and that was because charge was storing up in this capacitor. And so I had kids coming to me saying, we need a lecture on capacitors. How does this thing work? And I loved, I'd, in my whole career teaching physics, I never had kids begging for a lecture on capacitors before. 